Hello guys, welcome to the Train Pirate. Today I'm introducing TTP Grid, which is a strategy that for the first time allows you to backtest a grid. You can select the price range of the grid, you can select the time range of the grid, you can define the number of levels, how much you want to invest per level, and then you can see right here on TradingView what was the profit. And today in this video, we're gonna look in detail how this strategy works and how you can use it as an educational tool to look back in time at different periods and different assets and how will a grid bot perform. Right here in the chart, you can see a diagram that is going to help you understand how your grid is doing in terms of realized, unrealized profits and the performance against the buy and hold strategy. You can also see in this orange line, the average position price. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how this strategy works. We're gonna look at each of the features that comes with it, all the statistics that I'm including in this indicator and stick around until the very end of the video because I'm gonna to explain to you how you can gain access to a trial of this indicator for free. Okay, so let's look at this indicator in detail. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable everything so we can explain exactly each of the settings. When you add this indicator to the chart, the first thing that you're gonna be asked is for these two levels, the minimum level and the maximum level. As you can see, I have here Bitcoin on the four hour chart. And the first thing I did was picking the prices of the whole range. I just want to do a back testing in that range. What I wanna do is I wanna compare a what if I was running this grid bot versus the buy and hold in the same period. The second parameter that is very important is the start and the end time of your grid bot. In this case, I have it from beginning of 2021 in January to right now. Even without any of the different charts plot on top of the indicator, you can already see the performance of this. And one of the most important things to get an accurate number right here is to open up the data window. The data window is a tab that is right there and you're gonna see TTP grid and you're gonna see all these statistics here. The top statistic that you can see is the cash needed or initial capital that you're gonna need to run specifically this grid. This grid has been set up with only five levels to make this more readable and I'm gonna go with an amount per level of 0.1 Bitcoin. So five levels of 0.1. So internally, the strategy, what it's going to do is going to say, how many levels do we have to the upside of the current price at the moment the strategy starts working? And then it's going to multiply that or the amount of Bitcoin and it's going to buy it in an initial position. Then it's going to reserve USD in this case, because we are doing BTC USD, it's going to reserve it for any grid levels that are below the initial price. And that is what we are going to call the cash needed. It's calculated only once and at the beginning of the strategy. This is exactly the way things are done on three commas and many other platforms that are doing grids. There's a calculation and there's an allocation of both base and quote currency. Once we look at this cash needed that is calculated by the strategy based on this, this and the initial price, you go to properties and you make sure that this number coincides with the initial capital. Once you do that, you're basically telling your strategy that you only have this amount of USD to trade and to calculate all the PL based on that. That's gonna be the money in your pocket at the beginning of the grid. If you forget to do that, all your stats are gonna completely off. Right, so I got my funding correct. I got my top level, lower level, beginning and end range of time set ready to start doing the back testing. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable the show grid levels. Okay, so now we can see all the levels here. You have green levels, you have red levels, and you have a gray level. What does it mean? The green levels are levels that are below the price. Those are buy levels. Red levels are sell levels and they are above the price. Why do we have a gray level? The gray level is a level that is currently inactive. And in grids, if you're not very familiar with grids, once an order is filled, that level becomes invalid. Until when? Until another level gets activated and filled. In this case, this was the last order that was filled. Therefore, this level won't activate until either this level or this level activates. That's the way a grid works. 
and it's exactly what this strategy is trying to mimic. The second thing that is very important is to see at all times what is your average position price. Let me plot it. It's going to appear as a line in orange and I'm going to explain what information you can extract from this line. This line starts there with the beginning of time when you start your grid. We told our grid that the date limit at the beginning is going to be 8th of January. And at that time, the price was around 40K. And the first thing that we say that the strategy is going to do is going to buy as many levels as we have to the upside. We got four levels to the upside, one, two, three, and four. That's why it's buying 0 0.4 Bitcoin. Right after that, the price drops and it drops to that level and it buys more Bitcoin. If we zoom in, that order didn't get filled. The price went back up, but this level at that point was disabled because it was just filled. That's why it gets ignored and ignored again. And then the price finally comes down to this level, filling that level of the order. That's exactly how a grid board. Now, this average, as you can see, as we are filling orders that are below the price, the average price is coming down because it's averaging down. First, it buys four and then you buy zero one. That's why it comes down just a tiny bit. Then you buy zero one, another tiny bit to the downside. As the price goes up, and it hits this level coming from below, we sell 0, 01. That's why you see minus 0, 01. Then you sell again here, here, here at the top. If you notice, as I drag the mouse, you can see the stats right here are also representing what's happening exactly with the grid. So for example, here, I can see the profits moving. I can see the current position is changing. So for example, here we have 0 0.5 Bitcoin. Once I fill that, I have 0 0.6. Then I sell it again. I have 0 0.5 again. So you can see how the holding is constantly changing throughout the time. Let's look at this area here. When we get this drop, here, that's the last time we sell. And as the price is collapsing in May, it's buying each of the levels. As you buy, it drops the average position size until we get there. That's kind of the minimum of the air until we get here where we resume selling Bitcoin to the upside. OK, that's just the average position size. Now let's focus on the profits because that's what we are here for. And for that, I'm going to bring in the show grid profits. This plot is drawn above the top level of the grid. In that way, you can visualize it better. So we enter with a position here. And if you follow the orange line, you're going to notice that there is some red area there, right? And that is because we enter at this orange level. Let me zoom in this. And then the price started coming down and we were below our average. And that is exactly what it is to hold a red back. That's why we have a red back here. This red back there is unrealized losses. As the price starts coming up, we are going to see that two different layers are being drawn here, the green and the yellow. The green is realized profits. So that is increasing every time we sell more Bitcoin to the upside, realizing those profits. Whereas the yellow area here is unrealized profits. It's drawn above the realized profits. And it means that if you cut time here, if you slice this and you stop the grid, you will take as a profit all the green area plus all the yellow area. And if you're wondering what are those values, they are all being drawn here. Grid realized profits and grid unrealized profits profits as well. As we move to the area where Bitcoin was more bearish, you can see that the realized profit remains at the same level while the unrealized losses are starting to take from the realized profits. Up until this day here, where almost all the profits that you realized are taken by the unrealized losses. And that's something that you can see on the right hand side where it says that you took 10K of profits realized minus almost 10K of unrealized profit. That's exactly what's happening here with the grid. Very quickly, as Bitcoin starts recovering, you start realizing profits and accumulating unrealized profits as well. And guess what? The best time is the all time high. That's where we are here and we got almost half of each. When the price starts coming back down, the unrealized losses are starting to take again. And you get the point. When we finish the time here, we're going to have two profits, the profits from the green and the profits from the yellow. And that gives us a total of 76 percent, which is more than 68. 
why there is a difference. There is a gap there because the profits that are shown in TradingView here are the profits only of realize. And here I'm doing a calculation of the sum of realize and unrealize. If I hover this area here, you're going to see that I'm at 90, 97% profit, but actually at this period here, I'm only at 76. And that's because the, the grid was still running here and not selling a holding of 0 0.3 Bitcoin. Whereas here we are holding 06 Bitcoin and we are just above the average price. So you can see how with all these different plots in the same chart, you can understand much better what's going on to the grid. And thanks to understanding better, then you can fine tune much better your entries in terms of using grids. Now, many people are supporters of grid bots. Many people love running a grid like this in a wide range for a long extended period of time. And they usually tend to debate with the people that they say that it's much better to do buy and hold. So now for the first time, you can compare in the same chart with a single strategy, both things. And you can see with your own eyes, which one is doing better. If you enable this option here called show buy and hold profits, we're going to get an extra drawing on top of the top one. This drawing is going to show us when the buy and hold is in profits and when the buy and hold is in negative. The buy and hold consists of buying at the same precise time that you started the grid, the whole amount of funds that were calculated in the cash needed in Bitcoin at that precise time. You buy it and you hold it until the last day and then we calculate the profits. In this case, we are closing down the time that is being tested with 18% profits from buy and hold. And that is drawn right there. We just exit not being in profit. And that's because Bitcoin is been doing sideways. So we bought at 40K and we are now at 47.8. That is 18% in profits from buy and hold. But no Look now the comparison of the performance of the grid starting from 40k and ranging all this period against the buy and hold is much more significant. It's 76%, all done in 18 trades. Now let's look into extreme situations of running a grid bot. You can always tap on the grid and it's going to highlight the levels that you can drag and drop. If you drag and drop, you can do things like move the top of the grid to just there. If you make any changes, you have to go back to properties and adjust the initial capital. In this case, now it only requires a little bit less to run. You can also do the opposite. You can set it right there and you can say, what if we enter at a higher price? So in this case, you can see that the grid is deployed around here and we enter below the grid and we buy all the levels to the upside. We buy 0 0.6 levels. If you want to test it in at a different time, you can also do that. I was always wondering what happens if I run a grid just in an uptrend or just in a downtrend versus the buy and hold. Now we can see that. So let's say we run the grid from the bottom and we set it to the top here, just for the sake of seeing an extreme situation. You will notice that now all the levels are in gray and that is because we are telling the grid to finish before the current time. Therefore, all the levels of the grid are now disabled because the grid has been disabled. This looks like an uptrend and you can see that the profits here of the buy and hold are significantly larger than the grid. And that is because at this level, even though we are buying all the levels of the grid, we start selling them a little bit earlier than what the buy and hold does. In the buy and hold, in this case, is selling at the top, buying at the bottom. Of course, you cannot get better than that. Let's look at another extreme case. Let's say we deploy a grid at the worst time ever and we buy really at the top and we sell at the bottom because we panic sell, basically. So let's see how bad are each of the circumstances. Let's adjust this, 24,565. So you can see how on the grid, the average price is coming down. Whereas when you do buy and hold, it doesn't change. It stays at the same value, obviously. And that's why the buy and hold here produces a significant larger loss. Buy and hold is at minus 52%, whereas the grid is only minus 32. So if you are in that unfortunate event of buying the top with both things, the grid will be at a less loss than the buy and hold. The next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do a replay. This is extremely cool because it allows you to see in real time how things are happening with the grid. And as an educational tool, I can 
cannot think of a better way for someone that has never understood a grid bot to look into this indicator, deploy it with your idea that will work great, and then see it in real time taking each of the trades. So for that, you hit replay and you select a time right before the beginning that you set with the grid. In this case, I set it to end of December. Now, once I hit play, we are going to see in real time how do we enter the grid and how do we buy the first levels. The first one to get bought is the five levels to the top. And we can see how the performance of the buy and hold is currently outperforming the grid. We are starting to sell the first two levels to the upside, rebuy one here. Now, as the price goes down into the same level, we don't rebuy or resell. That's the way the grid is supposed to do. Now we feel another sell and Bitcoin keeps going higher. These were exciting times. Keep following how the price is doing for the buy and hold. The is outperforming the grid just purely because of the entry we chose. Unfortunately, that entry is better for buy and hold. But as I show you in the previous examples, it is very easy to also catch a time where the grid completely destroys the buy and hold. We are getting very close to the top of the range and now we start damping. This is the damp of May and we can see how different levels are being filled. In this strategy, we allow to fill multiple orders in a single candle. This is great timing, July, and we start selling to the upside. Notice how they were matching the buy and hold. It's incredible how much insights you can get from this and how this could potentially reshape the way we see grid bots and how we use them. Guys, let me know in the comments if you want to see how a grid will perform in a specific time frame with a specific asset. If you want to trial this indicator, all you have to do is comment in this video right below and say, I would like to trial this indicator. My trading view username is, and then you write your username. After you do that, you will get seven days of trial. And if within those seven days you come back and you write another comment, giving me your feedback, right? As a response of your original comment, so I can find you, I'm going to give you one month of trial after that. This indicator is going to be included as part of all the perks that we are already giving to all our members. All members of the Trading Parrot are going to get access to this as long as you have a Trading Parrot or Patreon subscription. Make sure you leave a comment, you hit a like and you subscribe to the channel. And again, leaving a comment is the best thing that you can do for this channel. Thanks very much and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.